Hello and welcome to Bud Smart Home. In today's video, I'm going to show you two powerful newly released features in the SmartThings app that will help you automate with more control. First, I'll show you the action delay feature that gives you the ability to set delays between routine actions. Then I'll demonstrate the creation of recurring routine schedules so that you can schedule your routines to execute on a custom timeline. Let's jump on in. So first up, action delays. You can now tell smart things to wait between steps in a routine. So that's huge when you want a more natural flow to your automations. So let's go ahead and open up the smart things app right here. And we're in the home tab. So we want to go to the routines tab right here. So I'm going to click on that. Then up the top, you'll hit a plus sign. So what we're going to do in this routine that I'm going to demonstrate is show you that if uh, a trigger happens, that after that trigger occurs, then something will happen in the immediate. An example case would be uh, security lighting sequence. So if motion de is detected in your driveway after 10 p.m., you would want to trigger a porch light or spotlight to come on immediately. Then perhaps 10 seconds later, you would turn on an upstairs bedroom light followed by living room lights. So the purpose is giving the impression that somebody was awakened by the intruder and they're coming from upstairs, downstairs to check out the situation. So a pretty neat effect. I'm not going to show you that actual routine because I don't necessarily have all those devices in my setup, but I'll demonstrate this in uh, a routine in my kitchen so that when the kitchen door opens, that triggers my main kitchen light to come on. That light will go off in 10 seconds and at the same time, the sink light will come on and then 10 seconds after that an additional light will come on in my hallway so let's show you how to get that set up so the trigger in this case as i mentioned was the opening of that door so we'll go to device status we'll go to my kitchen and the door between my kitchen and garage will use that contact sensor and uh, when that opens then that'll be the trigger for the routine to start so let's go to the then section and we're going to control the kitchen light, the main kitchen light. And what we want to happen is we want that to turn on. So that's already set up to on. We'll hit done. So that'll come on as soon as the kitchen door opens. Then 10 seconds later, I said we wanted for the sink light to come on. But before we do that, let's go back into the kitchen light. And let's auto turn this off and let's do that in let's say five seconds done so it'll immediately turn on and turn off after five seconds and then in five seconds later we'll want to control the sync light we want that to come on but we want this action delayed and we're going to delay that let's say also, we'll delay it for five seconds. Turn on. Okay. Now, one thing to point out, uh, I thought it would be pretty cool if I could turn a light on and then turn it, auto turn it off after a set time. You can't use both of these actions within one action statement. So that's a bit of a bummer. You can either delay a light turning on or you can auto turn off the light uh, after a set time, but you can't do both. All right, then, then I said we wanted to turn the hall light on after a set amount of time. So let's control devices. Let's go down to the kitchen, select the hall light next. And so we want that to turn on. We want it at uh, 100% and we want it, let's say green. And we're gonna delay that action and let's do it for, I don't know, let's not make 20, let's say 15 seconds, 15 seconds. 
All right, so what should happen is that when the door is open, the kitchen light will turn on. It'll turn off after five seconds. Then we should see the sink light come on. And then 15 seconds, uh, we should see the hall light, the kitchen hall light come on. Now, one important note is that 15 seconds on the third light is 15 seconds after the routine has started. So these aren't cumulative. In other words, the times aren't cumulative. So we'll hit that save. We'll call this test two. Save. All right, now, okay, that gives you an idea of how that feature works, the delayed reactions. The next feature I'm gonna talk about is the recurring routine schedules. So now you can set routines to repeat either weekly, monthly, or even yearly. And this is perfect for regular reminders or seasonal automations. Uh, example case use, if you want to remind yourself to replace your air filters in the spring or also in the fall, or you can turn on your holiday lights uh, for a period of time between, say, for instance, uh, November 28th through January 15th, and uh, that allows you to set it up once and then forget it. It should reoccur every year during that time period. So I've already set up these routines. Let's look at the HVAC filters routine. So this allows you to send notification to members to replace the HVAC filters. And uh, so this is set up to occur every year on the 1st of April and also on October 1st. And it only occurs once per day. It's triggered by the detection of presence within my living room. And that causes a notification to be pushed to me and the living room lamps to turn blue when that happens. So to kind of remind me to go ahead and, and change the filters. So let's see how this is set up. So when you add a trigger to use the time periods, you need to select the time option. So if you want, you can set up you to repeat daily, weekly on a particular day or days. So if you say, if you want it on maybe Tuesday and Friday of every week, you can select that option. You can have it certain days of the month. So if you want it on the third and the 19th every month, you can set up a routine to trigger on those dates each month. Or if you want to do something yearly, you have the option to do yearly on a particular date or you can do it yearly during a period of time uh, for the automation for say holiday lights say for instance you want it from november 28th through january 15th so you'll select period of time uh, scroll through to you'll find november 28th and then let's go to the next date I don't want it clear into June. Let's go back up to January 15th. So there you see, if you scroll through the calendar, you'll see it starts on November 28th, continues the entire month of December, and then terminates on the 15th of January. So you'd hit done. So this will repeat all that time, hit done again. So every year uh, between on the November 28th through January 15th, of the next year now if you want to do a time period for when say for instance you're turning on lights you want that to come on in the morning say for instance at let's say 8 a.m and then you want them to turn off say 6 let's just say 6 30 p.m so now you have the lights will turn on at 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. every year between November 28th and January 15th of the following year. So then you can just go ahead and add the actions that you want to do. So that's how to set that up uh, for a period of time. The other example I gave if uh, the reminder to change the filters on two different times of the year. Uh, so let's go ahead and cancel out of that and I'll show you how to get that set up. So let's do a new routine. 
and we're going to uh, select time again we're going to repeat every year and this time we're going to just select date so let's say in the spring on let's say april 1st we want a reminder and then let's go ahead and scroll through to let's say october 1st um so we got those two dates selected if you go back and you look at april 1st it's selected and october 1st so we hit done and let's say i want it in a particular time period to be triggered uh, so we'll select any time between um, 6 o'clock a.m. and let's say 5 o'clock p.m. So I want it to run during that time period, but I only want it to happen once per day. So I'm going to select once per day and hit done. So on uh, every year on April 1st or October 1st, only one time per day between the hours of 6 and 5 p.m. And then the trigger I want to use is the device status. I'm going to go to my living room. Must have skipped it here. Yeah, here we go. So my living room, I have two different uh, presence sensors. So I'm going to select occupancy on that. And um, I can also select the second one, but for purposes of this routine, we'll, we'll select uh, just one of the present sensors. And then what I want to happen is I want to control devices. So let's say I, I mentioned that I wanted those lamps in the living room to turn uh, the color of blue. So I'm going to set a color, let's say a blue here. There we go. Okay, and then I want to turn them off automatically after 10 minutes. So I would add as many lights as I want. The other action I want is a push notification. So we'll send notification to members and I'm going to select specific members myself. I got to enter a message, of course. Change the HVAC filters. Okay, and hit done. All right, so then I get a notification as well. So that's how to set up that routine where on April 1st and also on October 1st, if my presence is detected in the living room between those specified hours, I'll get a push notification reminding me to change the filters. And I'll also have the lamps turn on to a blue color to kind of get my attention that something's happened and uh, then they'll turn off after 10 minutes. So we'll hit save. And I'm gonna cancel out of that because I have that routine already in place. So there you go. Um, two new features, the action delays and the recurring schedules. They help add some uh, real intelligence to your automations. If you haven't explored them yet, I'd encourage you to open up the SmartThings app and give them a try. And drop me a comment below. Uh, let me know how you're using these features in your own setup. And if this helped you, please give it a like. That helps uh, my channel. And also subscribe if you want more tips from Bud Smart Home. We'll see you in the next video.